Hi everybody and welcome to Art by Esther A. Today we will be painting uh, Golden Autumn Sunsets and it's part of See the Bright Side of Fall which is a YouTube collaboration that I'm doing with Angela Green and a few other YouTubers. So when you finish with this video take a peek on YouTube and search for the hashtag See the Bright Side of Fall and you'll be able to enjoy everyone's creative uh, and beautiful, beautiful paintings that they've put together for the fall, uh, all of this week, I believe. So be sure to check that out. And once again, thank you for joining us. I was supposed to go live today, so I'm re uh, recording this in hopes that um, I can put it up in place of going live. I'm sorry about that. I don't have the requirements apparently to be able to go live. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the painting, see what we need, make sure we've got all of our supplies ready. It's a little bit hot in my art studio today, so we are going to just apply the paint as we need it because it is extremely hot in here. I have on my canvas right now the sample of the painting and we're going to use an 11 by 14 stretched canvas. This one has been uh, gessoed. I always gesso my canvases even if they come pre-gessoed. And we're going to start by placing some titanium white. on our palette. You want a nice big glob of it. We need our cadmium yellow light hue. We need the cadmium yellow deep hue. And let's go ahead and put some of the primary red. Now because of the temperature inside the art studio, I need to use a medium to keep the paint wet, be able to still blend um, out the edges and everything. So I'm using a medium by Golden, but there are other brands out there uh, that I've tried. I have here actually. So this is just the, the one that I'm using right now, but you can use any brand. And I'll show you what it looks like. Acrylic glazing liquid. This one is gloss. They also have matte, and some companies even have more selections than that. So um, this is the only one I have on hand right now, but you can use matte if you don't want any shininess. I used it on this painting here, and I very, it's not like putting varnish on top. It's not that kind of glossy, so you can use it. And here is the palette. might need to put more paint but for now we're going to just start out with these and our number one wash number one sorry it's a one inch brush called a wash and once you've gessoed your canvas you don't need a thick layer or anything like that So I'm going to put a little bit of this to the side of my palette and okay 
So what we're going to do is put the first color on the upper portion here almost completely all the way to the right. And we're going to be filling the top thir two thirds of the canvas. The bottom third will be for the grass. Um, I haven't put the blue on my palette yet. I'll just go ahead and add it when we're ready for it. I'm going to wet my brush a little bit. And let me put a towel here. Okay. So I'm going to take some of my white and load both sides of the brush just a small amount, okay. Now take the light yellow, okay, and then swish like this. I want to see what it looks like. All right, this is not very much paint at all. We're going to need more than this, but I just want to kind of show you how lightly I'll be putting this on. Okay, I'm going to go back for some more white. About half of the... Um, brush bristle, bristles will have yellow on it and just move it about once and then twice because we'll blend as we're applying it if you're worried about streaks this is something we do want because we want this to be a really authentic sky when the sun is setting, beautiful colors and hues on a wonderful, peaceful fall day. So as I'm applying it, I'm just gently swiping from left to right to blend my colors ever so slightly going back for some more and you can tell I'm not overloading my brush barely halfway down the bristles okay and remember if you're um, just beginning to paint you don't want your paint to go into the ferrule which is this crimped piece of metal on your brush you don't want the paint to go inside there so I never let my paint get up this high okay so I'm going to take my white and light yellow and just gently swipe from left to right like you're on tinder how about that just swipe 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 that dating app <laughs> okay now we're going to take a little bit of the dark yellow dab it in this little mix here take a scoop and just go whoop whoop like that and just gently. There are many different ways to achieve this look. Not one technique or another is wrong. Um, so different artists will have different techniques. I've kind of learned different ways of doing this and I'm just trying to think of what might be the easiest for a beginner, for someone who's basically just picking up, you know, a, a canvas and a brush for the very first time. So you can see that I'm getting that dark yellow there. Okay, just a little bit. You keep going back for more. I'm gonna use a tiny corner of the medium. 
it not only helps keep the paint wet a little bit longer, but it also helps um, create glazes when you use a little bit um, in a color. You can make it like a almost like watercolor. And in this instant, it can make a, a paint that's a little bit too thick. It can make it a little bit smoother. The paint that I'm using here is soft. Um, it is not soft body. It's not heavy body. It's a um, student grade acrylic paint by Liquitex. And you can use any brand that's within your budget, um, especially if you're just starting out. You don't need to have a fancy dancy brand, especially because you don't know if you'll be liking painting when you first start out and you want to just try. Liquitex sells a set of about 48 colors or something like that. And I mentioned it not because I'm being sponsored or anything. I'm not. I just like uh, giving out little tips and stuff like that, uh, especially for, for beginners. They have this box of 48 colors around around 60 to 70 I think and it is really good if you want all of their colors but don't want the large tubes uh, at least not yet so that's pretty good for a beginner I think I'm almost done with my 48 count box actually been using it I love the, the smoothness of the paint I've tried so many brands so many different kinds throughout the years and I really like how I feel like I'm getting a professional um, quality for a student kind of price you know although there are uh, other brands that are cheaper and if you ever need a recommendation, we're going to lo uh, load a little bit of the darker yellow now more and more as we get further and further down. I want to make sure to keep some of the light yellow and some of the white in between here because I want it to look... Check the camera. Okay, that's good. Um, I want it to look like how when you look at the sky, you see that the colors are really fluffy and, and blended together and they blend into each other seamlessly so that's what we're trying for here and I don't want it to be a single solid block of yellow of, of, of white of red blue I want it to be a gradient of colors so as I was saying about the paint there are other brands that are really inexpensive and you can always ask around and see the the best thing about I mean the best recommendation I can give is really just to try out um, and see what fits for your budget try the uh, get one tube of one brand one tube of another and just kind of try them out and then you can see if you like it or not okay just stretch my arm a little bit Now we're going to start moving towards the red, but I want to put it from around here to here, a little bit of blue as we get to the bottom, and then I have the green grass. So I'm going to take my brush and just put the tiniest little corner into the red and blend it into the mix of yellow and white that I had here in the center. And just kind of almost like a dry brushing technique apply it to my canvas really lightly again pretend you're on tinder and swipe just so lightly um, also like how lightly you would apply blush 
to your face when you're putting makeup on. Okay, so I'm going to take some red now. And you've noticed that I haven't cleaned my brush. And that's because I want the colors to run into each other. So I am just taking what's already on it and putting a little bit of red, the primary red, the cad uh, dark or deep hue, and a little bit of white. I don't want to blend it into a solid color on my palette. I want these streaks. Those are beautiful. So here's the trick. It's not necessarily a beginner stage painting. I would actually level this painting a, a third level, a hard level, or a three hoot if you follow the art Sherpa. And um, because of that, I'm gonna try to explain it for beginners and for um, level one painters who have a little bit of experience now, followed some tutorials. I want you to push ever so slightly on the canvas. Again, there's many techniques. There's no right or really technically wrong way to do it. There's no rules in art. But I want this to kind of show underneath what we're about to do and also mark the area a little bit. And like this, it shows you exactly how lightly I'm pushing right now. So the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to over blend my paint. I'm really loving how authentic it looks for a sunset. I'm loving the streaks and I just don't want them to be a solid eyeliner kind of uh, mark of, of a red, of orange, of yellow, of green, of blue, of black, and yellow, purple. <laughs> I want them all to seamlessly blend into each other and look just as much like they were a photograph as you can. Look how beautiful that is. And that's why you saw me putting the deep to the light to the white, just kept on kind of intermixing them here. And you'll notice each time I paint this, it'll come out different. It depends on how you're feeling emotionally, physically. It depends on your mood. You, it depends on... Um, if you want to improve on something that you did the first time or not, you know, so it's okay to deviate a little bit. I don't have a traceable for this painting because it really, it really wouldn't work. Uh, th there isn't really a traceable for this one. So if you want to practice the trees send me a message here on my youtube page i respond to every single one and you can also send me a message on facebook i have a um, page for my art called art by esther a e s t e r is how you spelled esther and i will uh, draw one out for you and, and give you a, something that will be a traceable for the trees and um, something that you can then kind of practice for the painting and trace on if you would like to. I would definitely did that when I first started out. So it's a good technique. As we're chatting, I'm going ahead and applying the deep yellow, a little bit of white, bunch of red and I just keep lightly applying and you can see from my um, brush movements that I am gently applying it gently pushing it back and forth so that we can blend it if you push too hard it will um, mesh the colors together you won't get um, the yellow and the orange and the, and the red in there that it's ni nicely creating on its own, it'll completely blend that out. You'll lose all of that work. So 
that's why we are doing this gentle motion. Turning my brush a little bit sideways here for some, some cloud type of streaks and kind of taking this as a stress-free approach to painting. Um, I'm trying to go a little bit slowly. Our, um, back pain and, and other issues like that can make it hard to have the stamina to, to do a very difficult painting or to paint very quickly. So if you feel like it's going too fast, don't be afraid to pause the recording, um, you know, to do the, this section or any other section, and then just unpause it and keep going. One of the little tips that we can give is definitely to keep an eye on your posture, try to have your back up against a chair, try and take frequent breaks so that you can stretch and you don't worsen your pain. Painting is, is so therapeutic. I really have found personally over the past 25 years that it's extremely helpful with my depression and anxiety with the pain that I suffer from, from endometriosis and uh, fibromyalgia and a number of other illnesses that I have. It's just like those are the two main ones that I just kind of mentioned at the top. I feel like painting among other hobbies, other um, art practices are very therapeutic. They help you uh, to focus on something positive, to focus on something very uplifting. And not just that, you know, um, grieving and depression and anxiety can make you feel isolated, can make you feel so alone. So when you have something like this that, that puts your hands um, to use and, and keeps them busy, it can really help with um, your anxiety. It can really help focus your mind. I have found um, that it keeps you from being too much in the pain when your mind is busy and you're and you're with your hands doing something something physical something you can actually see something you can hold something tangible when your hands are busy like that you're not focusing on the pain as much it can be like 30 minutes an hour or more before you even see that time has passed where when you're feeling so depressed or feeling a lot of anxiety, having an anxiety attack, things like that, it can feel like days or like the whole day is just taking forever to pass. So things like art, in my opinion, are extremely therapeutic. Now, if we had applied the paint heavier here, like we did at the top, it wouldn't be light and streaky like this. It would be a more solid color, um, maybe perhaps like a block of red that you would have to then blend out. But when I did my first painting, I pushed the skyline up, up, up a little bit, and it was to depict a setting sun. And I thought about my first tutorial where I put these little streaks and kind of made it a really fun uh, background. I thought about how much I loved that and so I decided that I would implement a little bit of that in this one. So it just goes to show you how differently they can come out. And I love to see everybody's take on um, tutorials that they follow online or um, an image that everybody does the same one of 
and how differently they can come out, how beautiful they are, and everyone's perspective, you know, how um, each one can result in, in different paintings, all equally beautiful. So I'd love for you to share your um, finished painting with me. You can share it with me on Instagram by tagging me, Art by Esther A, or on Pinterest, on Facebook. Um, if you have a different medium or anything like that, just go ahead and leave a message for me here on YouTube, and I'll meet you there and check it out. I've got to set up an email account still for my art, but any one of those social media will work. going to add a little bit more medium and you can see I'm really not putting a lot of paint on my palette I knew that um, I'm run it runs hot in here and I didn't want to waste a lot of paint but most people don't have such dry working conditions so um, you probably wouldn't have to use a medium and if you do you would use it for these purposes of glazing and blending on the palette on the canvas rather but I tend to be like a conservative painter when it comes to how much paint I put on my palette um, I'd started before <laughs> the uh, dry working conditions it really did I don't want any drop to go to waste at all. <laughs> I wish I could turn around right now and see everybody's paintings and see how they're coming along. This is so much fun and so exciting. I can't wait to see them. Definitely tag me and show me on um, Facebook. I'm really excited to see everybody's paintings. Okay, so our grass is going to be down here, but I just want to put a little bit of the red and yellow for the little bits of uh, clouds and things that we're going to be putting here. We haven't used the blue, um, and I'm going to be using a little bit of it, but I was just really in the moment feeling this a lot, so we're going to keep it. Just darken the bottom a little bit more with our red. Getting more paint now. One tip, you can buy a huge bottle of white, titanium white, since it's the color that we, most all of us use the most, you can buy a huge tube with any company that you, um, you've, you know, gotten to really like. Most of them will sell large tubes like this or bottles. And I'm telling you, I have, I've had this all year, I think longer than that actually um but yeah they're fantastic and a really great way to save money because we really do use quite a bit of white if you're curious to know why we used white with the yellow on the upper part i did put gesso on the canvas before we started but I'm going to clean my brush while we chat for a second. Yellow, just a tip, an art tip. Yellow does not show up as well when you're painting over a dark color. So if you were to paint over white and apply white as your base, it'll show up. You can have a solid yellow color that's bright and you really get to um, 
get the most out of the paint. But if you were to paint over black, or red, or blue, any any color, orange even, just um, most colors, the yellow will not show up through. And I found this even for some other colors as well. So I first discovered this many, many moons ago when I was painting a sunflower. And I put my background on. It was going to be this really cool blue blended background that kind of um, was a little bit abstract and when I started painting the yellow it wasn't bright it was like see-through you could see the blue underneath of it oh man there was so many problems with it and I realized why I realized that it 